Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Shinrin Yoku, and Yurt Life, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Friday, February 9th, around noon Mountain Time 2024. The second largest solar flare of the cycle just kicked off the backside of the sun, an X3.3, meaning that this flare was much stronger. Keep calm. It's boom time. False spring is here for the east, warm weather in much of the U.S., but it's not here to stay, folks. Here's some interesting views of that flooding in Southern California. Take a look at the L.A. area, literally turned into rivers there, and we do have an, another piece here. Take a look at that flooding. Massive, over 12 inches of rain fell during those atmospheric rivers. And a rare super El Nino has been declared. What does that mean? Well, take a look. We are in rare super El Nino currently, right now. And during a typical El Nino pattern, what we'll get is wetter in the south, like we just saw in L.A. And that means wetter for Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus. It's not going to last long. It's just going to last probably until the beginning of summer here. As we can see, the El Nino, La Nina predictions, El Nino will end April through June as La Nina comes back into the fray for winter 2024-25. Colder than average January across much of the U.S. with record cold in the Bay Area as snow builds much needed across North America. We've been reporting on the snowpack, and here's the forecast. Hazardous weather tracking across the south today into the weekend. A deep upper-level trough and associated surface low-pressure system will drive several areas of hazardous weather today through the weekend and into next week while crossing the southern U.S. Heavy snow is possible in the southern Rockies and Plains today into Saturday, while excessive rainfall and severe thunderstorms are outlooked across parts of the south Saturday and into Monday. We'll take a look at the map real quick. We've had 42 inches in the last three days up at Wolf Creek Pass. Here you can see on the map that severe weather developing Saturday and into Sunday, moving across the southeast. So it will be damp. And dangerous for many through Monday into Tuesday. And then that storm bombs out and it could bring some heavy totals for the Northeast. A swath through central Pennsylvania um, and Massachusetts there. Heavy snow predicted. Let's walk it through. Here is the snowfall for Friday into Saturday, mostly in the West. Sunday and into Monday, that storm's going to develop in the central U.S. and race across Oklahoma here Monday, Tuesday. And by late Tuesday, it could bomb out over Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, Connecticut, southern New York State. Now, the models have been shifting, and this was showing much heavier snow for New York and Philly. So we'll wait a day to see where this is actually going. But the snowfall forecast looks pretty epic moving through the next two weeks of February. Shut up, Al! Get in your hole! Al Gore is not happy. And the UK won't be happy as well. Scotland faces snow warning as hundreds of flood alerts remain in place for England. Now, the latest forecasts come as several schools across the UK remain closed due to snow, and more snow is on the way. Railways and ferry services have also been affected. Take a look at the moisture that's coming in the next 10 days for the UK, and much of Europe. And if we turn that over to total snowfall, Heavy totals for Scotland in many areas in Europe, especially in Russia. Take a look at that. Greta's boyhood home won't be looking, will be buried as well. Now, I'm sure many of you heard that follow us on Twitter about the Florida earthquake yesterday. It's the largest ever recorded off the state's east coast as a rare four magnitude tremor strikes just 100 miles off the coast of Cape Canaveral. Now, is this really a rare event? I took a few minutes and looked into it. And in fact, it is not a rare event. It's been happening pretty recently, quite regularly. 3.9 two years ago in the same region and a 3.9 in July two years ago, 3.9 in June two years ago. We've had a 3.8 seven years ago. So many quakes in this region. In fact, one, two, three, four, 
about 10 in the last 20 years, all right off the, about 100 miles offshore of Orlando. Most of them a little north. So this is definitely some kind of settling on the continental shelf here. But it is not that rare uh, of an event, and it happens quite regularly, every few years. So thems are the facts. Taking a look at the rest of the seismic map, just a 6.1 here in the Kermadec Islands, New Zealand, at 10 kilometers. I'm sure getting a few panties in a bunch there, but far away from civilization. No other quakes of note. Some low-level activity in Mexico, multiple four-magnitude shocks there. And we did have a rumbler in Italy at a 4.3. So I'm sure that shook some China closets. Now, Iceland declares a state of emergency after another eruption from the volcano. This is the third time in just two months. And the initial rupture was fantastic. We covered it on the live stream, which we will link after this video. 50 to 80 meter high lava fountains, three kilometers long. And it did destroy some infrastructure, including a pipe. And if we go over to the eruption now, it has all but come to an end. Nothing much to see there. You can see the large amount of lava that came out in less than 48 hours. And just a few points of puffing there. Not much erupting. <coughs> Seismicity has almost dropped off a cliff uh, for the region as we're looking at here, a tremor as well, as eruptive activity diminishes further. About 15 million cubic meters of lava formed during the first seven hours. A very fast eruption. Volcanic tremor has significantly decreased since yesterday. The decrease was detected shortly after noon yesterday alongside a decreased eruptive activity on the fissure. Temporary increases in volcanic tremor were noted last evening, which coincided with increased volcanic activity in the craters. So we're keeping a close eye on the activity there as it appears to be coming to a close. It did engulf a hot water pipe, and they're probably fixing that infrastructure today. And yesterday, there was a Frio magmatic explosion from the fissure as it mixed with the groundwater. So pretty exciting explosion captured on video which will be linked after, right after this video. So the Reykjanes volcano has decreased significantly, to say the least. Now let's talk about that X-flare shooting off the backside as, well, thankfully that sunspot turned around the limb. This would have been more like maybe X9 or 10. It's anyone's guess, but that sunspot was way behind the limb, hours behind the limb, when this event occurred. The second strongest solar flare of the current solar cycle, an X 3.3 event was observed at AR 3575 at 1314 UTC with a large coronal mass ejection. And in fact, there was, you can see that map there. There is the X 3.38. And if we come over uh, to SDO, looking at 131 angstroms here, we can see how far around the limb that sunspot was when it blew. It was gone, and that's there is the X-flare. So the sunspot, see how far we have to turn it back to make it visible? is right there, and so it's hours behind the sun before this baby goes boom. Let's grab this and show you that X-flare again. Wow. Pretty phenomenal. So that would have been a big X. And if it was down here, we might have some issues. But crossing our fingers on this big spot, earth facing, that uh, nothing is coming out of there. There's that X flare. And it did send us into, let's look at the latest HMI on 10th at that spot. So we do have a big spot facing earth, but currently not flaring. Now, the major X flare has put us into a proton storm. We're about to enter level two proton event here in just a few minutes. So that is currently ongoing, and we'll keep monitoring that for you. As ice cores, a new paper showing a quick loss of Antarctic ice 8,000 years ago. <clears throat> we were discussing this topic last weekend on our radio show where I suggested sea levels could have been 70, 80 feet higher about 8,000 years ago, and more confirmation that that may have very well be true. 
Now, what in fact would happen if all of the ice on Earth currently melted? Well, that would be an even bigger sea level rise. If all of the ice on Earth were to melt, that would rise sea levels 68.3 meters or 224 feet, literally submerging almost the entire population of the Earth. That would be horrendous. Now, the great crustal shift hoax of catastrophism, the truth they tried to hide by Kevin Jameson, is now out on Kindle. If you're interested in it, the link will be below. You can also Google for the PDF and find it free on the Internet Archives. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video as we are shadow banned. We need your help to grow. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. We love you. Be safe. We're going to be interviewing Ashton Forbes tonight. And so stay tuned for that interview. Mm -hmm.